Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel here. Uh, my name is Patrick Lee Greaves. Um, today I'm going to be painting, it's another similar uh, scene to what I've been doing before, but it's a boat scene. Uh, it's two large fishing boats on the beach. And I really want to be concentrating on uh, sort of, again, dry brush technique, because that's something I, that I find is lacking in my paintings, and that I know that dry brush technique can add so much... Uh, so much interest to a painting. So that's my intention, and that's what we're gonna be doing. Anyway, um, I'm starting off with the sky, and I wanna put a few clouds in, so I've just painted a wash of cerulean blue and cobalt blue mix, and a little bit of uh, Prussian blue in there as well, I think. But you could just do it with cobalt blue if you wanted to, do that the same thing with cobalt blue or cerulean blue, you don't have to mix up blues. It just adds a little bit of variety to what you're doing. And now what I'm doing is I'm just softening the edges with water and dragging it around just to get some, so it's a mixture of hard and soft edges on the cloud. We don't want all hard, uh, hard edges and all, or, or soft edges. I've added a little bit of alizarin, Oliver, excuse me, alizarin crimson, and I think it's a bit of burnt sienna as I go down the page, just to give it a bit of warmth as we start hitting the land. Just working my way down the page. Again, that's more uh, of the same blue that's in the sky, just to uh, help unify the painting. We don't want to be using a different blue, really. So a nice, simple effect. Working on the foreground now, just a little bit of uh, burnt sienna, burnt umber, um, some alizarin crimson. And just trying to create a bit of uh, perspective in the foreground by drawing those dry brush strokes out. So eventually, as I build up the layers in this part of the painting, because that will be quite dark there by the end. Oh, there we go. I've started to add a few more, a bit more burnt sombre. And in the burnt sombre, there's a little bit of cobalt blue. And I'm just going to vary. I got a little bit lost here when I was doing this. So I was getting a bit confused, adding a bit of green to it just to mix up the colours, just so they're not all the same. But I persevered. I wasn't over happy, over happy with the painting at this stage. But as I said in many of my videos before, don't ever give up on your painting. Keep painting to the end. If you, if you think it's going to be a disaster, keep going, uh, because you'll be surprised. Often, um, they towards the end they start coming together and you're actually very pleased with what you've done so uh, see it through I was just doing the cottages at the top on the hillside again I wasn't overly pleased with this part of the painting it wasn't until actually I started painting the boats that for me it all started coming together but that's often the way you'll, you'll, you'll do a part of the painting and you'll think well that doesn't look very good um, and then when you do another part, it kind of sets it off. It balances the painting out. So be patient with your work. Don't give up on it straight away or don't give up on it at all. See it through to the end. So I'm just using a mixture of greens here. Nothing special. You can use any greens. Add some blue to it, your green. Add a little bit of red just to warm it up slightly. Neutralise it a little bit. Um, just you get a variety, really. There we go, a little bit of red going into it, just to change it. Because the trees at the top are very dark. I think they're like those little pine trees you get growing on the coast. And they kind of... I don't know why, I, I think I rushed this bit at the top when I started. I wasn't really giving it the thought. I could have used some nicer colours. But, uh, you know, that's that's the whole fun of painting, really. You, you're constantly learning. You're never going to stop learning. And I've, uh, every time I do a painting, I, I'm, I'm learning from it, which is great. You know, that's what keeps it interesting. Especially now I've had a break and I'm coming back to painting. I find I'm seeing things, you know, with fresh eyes again. There we go. You can see I've painted that one. And the background was painted very loosely, you know, because the, the actual focal point is the boats. So I didn't want the background competing with it too much, being too much detail. So it's just painted very loosely. 
And I think another good thing to do, if you can when you're painting, if you find yourself getting bored with a painting or you're feeling uninspired and you, 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 you're kind of like, you know you're not doing the best you can, you're not mixing the colours you know you can produce, walk away from it, set your, your, your brushes down, go and have a cup of coffee or just leave it for another day and come back to it. Don't, often I find if I'm trying, trying to persevere and uh, I'm not really feeling like it, it often ends up in not such a great painting or disaster even. Um, and that happens quite frequently. So that's just the back of the seawall there. And you can see I'm doing some negative painting around the boats now and it's sort of like drawing the shape of the boats out. I like that little yellow boat actually, it just takes your eye through, carries your eye through the painting to the wall. Right, now I'm just going to start launching to the boats, start painting those. And that's yellow, uh, cadmium yellow with a little bit of cadmium red. Is it cadmium red? Actually, there's a little bit magenta in it, I think I've put. But I could have put cadmium red, it would have been fine. Um, you know, either would work perfectly. The boat kind of disappears, all that kind of melts in towards the end. I'm not too worried about what's going on at the rear of the boats. I'm using the Cotman paints, Windsor and Newton Cotman paints, and I find they have a great strength of pigment. Um, and they work really well. In fact, I just put a new order in a couple of days ago. Should should arrive today or tomorrow. And uh, I've ordered a new colour from them. It's turquoise, which I thought might be good for sea and that type of stuff. So, uh, and it should mix. It should make some good uh, shadow colours as well. So added to like the burnt sienna, burnt umber, things like that. It could make some interesting darks. So I'm looking forward to playing around with that. When it comes, I'll let you know and I'll make a point of using it. Again, I'm trying to sort of get that dry brush in there to add a bit of sparkle to things as I'm doing. I don't want to be painting it too... Uh, there are some numbers written in there. working very slowly <laughs> this is where I know that I'm not quite up to speed on this painting I've been very 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 careful but I'm not being careful in the way I paint you know I'm not making sure I fill everything in accurately I literally just you know just paint in a very loose way as you can see but if you do the whole painting like that it will works out at the end you know, you don't want to be a very sort of considered, careful painter and then, you know, branch out the other way halfway through. You know, it, it won't tie together. So if you just start off with a loose way of painting and see it through to the end, it usually usually results in a painting that's uh, OK. OK, OK. When I look back at the video now, because I'm doing this obviously as a talk over, I'm wondering to myself, what is taking me so long to make the decisions? Because it wasn't that complicated really, it's a relatively easy scene, it should be pretty straightforward. 
So it's quite interesting, actually. Maybe it's a good idea if uh, if others, you know, like yourself, you know, any beginner who can, who's got the the the, the stuff, the equipment to video maybe a couple of paintings they do and watch them back and learn from it and in retrospect you might actually learn things from your technique actually i think that'd be a pretty good idea i haven't really thought about about that before but yeah so if you've got the if you've got a camera or you've got a tripod or something try videoing one of your paintings and then stick it on your computer in movie maker or something like that and it will make a movie for you out of it and then you can watch it back and you may well see see things that you could do differently. I'm certainly seeing things I could do differently on this painting. And it would be a nice record as well for the future. I'm sure a lot of people would find it very interesting. Got a bit confused down there. I was thinking what's going on. reference picture was hard to um it was hard to decipher what was happening really and instead of but towards the end i just in a minute i just loosen up more and uh it all starts coming together a bit more i think when i do that you see all that could have just been one brush stroke really but i was messing around with a small brush and really undecided what I was doing or what I wanted to do because I don't follow photographs necessarily um, identically if there's things I feel that might look better as a painting than say a photograph I change them around and that's the beauty of being an artist you're not stuck to uh, obeying just the photograph is no more than a reference um, for you to get information from if you need it Just put a bit of shadow colour in here. I think I mixed this a little bit too dark. I knew it would dry lighter, but uh, it was a bit too black looking and dark. and it wasn't really giving it full concentration, maybe. Started to look better when I got these darks in, these shadows in. Started to knit that part of the boat, pull it, pull it together a bit. And when I get the other boat in, <laughs> there we go. Just some bits of colour on there. That's better. Again, going darker again. And to go dark on my yellow, I'm not using a blue there, I'm just using um, a cadmium yellow. I think there's a bit of orange. There may be a bit of a touch of blue in there. Looks to me like there is. Just to darken it slightly, but still keep colour. Now just painting the fenders on the opposite boat. With a bit of magenta colour, pinky colour. And I don't mind them all running into the paintwork on the opposite boat because they kind of melt into the shadows. And it's those sort of, that's what makes watercolour such a lovely medium to work with when, you, when you're able to find passages within your painting where they actually, parts of the paintings melt into things and it's just what makes them a beautiful medium to work in. Now I've got some really dark paint coming up now. That's some Prussian blue and some burnt sienna and anything like that, those sorts of colours. Make some real darks. I 
And this is where I try and link the two boats together. Because it almost looks as if the boats are colliding. They're not, obviously, because they're stationary, but they've kind of come up very close together when drying out. Trying to create a little bit of texture again there with the dry brush stroke by darkening the foreground. Now we're going to paint the blue boat and link these two together. And I find when, it, when I link these two together, it seems to start coming together. A little bit of cerulean blue. It's got a bit of yellow in there as well by lots of things, so it's not bright cerulean blue. But uh, just painting around some little details there. I wanted to leave white. Yeah, you can see some yellow in there. That's fine. Now this is the uh, slightly darker side. There we go. Now in a minute, it's got legs on the side of that boat. When they're painted in, it'll look like it can't just fall over. Because at this stage you would think it was going to topple over. I'm just using some plain dark pigment now. Um, that's burnt umber to draw in. There we go, you see that's a nice bit of dry brush there. We go to windows, start adding all these little details and things really do start pulling together a bit more. And then there's some stuff on the roof. You can't really make out what it is, so just put in, if you can't really make out what you can see, just paint the shadows, the lights and darks, and then that's enough really. Just suggesting a little bit of seaweed on the beach. That's just a little bit of burnt umber. And try and do it with a dry brush. Just be a bit random and wiggly with your brush. Just darkening down the water a little bit. Make it a bit more, uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's necessary or not really. Okay, so what really helps again is putting in the rigging, rigging on the boat where the uh, all the fishing gear is and that sort of stuff. Not worrying too much about being too accurate with that, just uh, sketching in lightly with a brush. Again, if like your lines aren't drawn with, the, if you draw them with a ruler, I think it looks a little bit unnatural. But if you just do it freehand and you do them all in the same way, then they look fine. Little mooring lines coming in. Messed that one up a bit, but hey. And for a relatively quick sketch, I thought this painting was full of, you know, it turned out okay for me. I was quite happy with it. There's things I could improve upon, I know. 
a lot, but uh, overall it had lots of energy. Um, had that balance of dry brush, which I'm really trying to uh, get back into using more in my paintings. Um, so yeah, overall I'm really pleased with it. So adding some darks at the bottom of that sea wall just to sort of make that boat pop out a little bit more. A bit of negative painting around the boat. And in the process that just helps the boat stand out a little bit more. Again on the top of the sea wall, just adding a few darks here and there just to indicate a few bricks and stuff like that. Just helps take the viewer's eye through, really. So we're nearly at the end. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the video, please, uh, you know, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and any questions you may have, I'll do my best to answer. Um, also, uh, check out my Skillshare courses. The link is below the video because uh, they're obviously f much more in depth and give you, you know, a full lesson with complete step-by-step -step tutorial all the way through if that interests you um and uh, yeah come back for more switch your notifications on that's what everyone says and watch more of my videos and i don't really know what i was doing here i guess i was just i thought these things were necessary I'm not sure if they are or not But uh, there we go. So thanks ever so much for watching. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again. There's the finished painting. I hope you enjoyed it. So enjoy your painting, everyone. Take care, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.